And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Lost Cities, one of the best two-player games ever designed. You say, wait a minute, you're saying that at the beginning of your video. Yes, well, I've reviewed Lost Cities before. I've played it many times before, actually. This is the new version of it. The new version of it, this comes with the sixth expedition inside it, which was a promo expansion. I believe I reviewed that a couple years ago. Now it comes in here. And so if you've never played this, this is your chance to jump in. This is a fabulous little game for two players, which really has some nice back and forth in it. Let me show you. In this game, players are going to play with five different colors, so a board is placed between the two players, like this, or if you want to play a longer game, you can play with six colors, and you add the purple cards in the deck. The games are played pretty much the exact same way, it just takes a little bit longer, because there are more cards in the deck. Now I want to talk a little bit about scoring first. So these are expeditions. If you never play a card on the side of an expedition, nothing happens. But once you play a card somewhere on a side of an expedition, you're going to either get or lose points. Each expedition that you start costs 20 points. So even though this one will give me two points, it's going to cost me 20, so this one will end up as a negative 18. If I play the 5 on top of it, now it's only negative 13. Now if I play this on top of that, it's only negative 6. If I play this, I'm now getting 2 points. And if I play this on top of that, I'm now going to get 12 points from this row. A wager card will double it. Two wager cards will triple, three will quadruple. So if I played this on a spot, I'm going to lose 18 times 2. That's 36 points. In fact, if I just play this, which I've never seen anyone do, you would lose 40 points in a spot. So the best thing to do, if you can possibly pull it off, is to play everything in a row. All three wager cards, and then 2 through 10 which is going to give you 136 points or something around that frame. And not only do you get a whole pile of points, but if your row has eight or more cards, you get a bonus of 20 points. Now the way the game goes is you're going to take this deck here that has three wager cards and two through ten of each of the colors that are in here. You're going to shuffle it and deal a hand of, card, a hand of cards to each player. Players are going to take turns back and forth and until someone draws the last card from the draw pile, when that happens the game will instantly end and you'll score both sides. You play, they call it a game, but that's essentially a round. You play three rounds adding the scores from each round and whoever has the most points is the winner. So you have eight cards in your hand. On your turn, you must either play a card in a spot, and you can play it in the proper row or com. You just have to play a number on top of it that's higher. So if I play the eight green there, first of all, I can no longer play wager cards there, and I can no longer play seven, six, five, four, three, or two there. I can only play the nine or 10 on top of that card. So I better have the nine or 10, or I'm about to lose points in that spot. Again, you can play wager cards in an area, but once you start playing, in, once you play a number card, you can no longer play wager cards in that spot. Or, instead of playing a card to a spot, you can discard a card. When you discard a card, you discard the cards to the proper piles, the proper color piles, in the middle of the table. And if you play, if there's already a card there, it just goes on top of it. At the end of your turn, you will draw a card. You can draw from the, the draw pile near the board, or you can draw the top card from one of these discard piles into your hand. You just can't draw the one you just discarded. Once the top card from the draw pile is pulled, and when you get to the end, you can fan them out so you can basically count how many turns are possibly left. The game I said instantly ends, you score up. That's how you play. Again, the main difference is there's six colors on this side and five on the other. So the box holds the cards. It's a pretty nice box to actually hold the cards here, then the board goes on top. It looks pretty cool in here. The art on these cards is really well done. I really like the look of each of these. 
I also like how they each have a color, but then they have a symbol that matches that color. So you don't need to worry about color blindness. So you just match the symbols. But each of them has, even though the game itself is very abstract, and yes, you're going exploring here, each of these does give you a little bit of a theme as you hunt for through a jungle, through the desert, through whatever it is to find that. And the card backs also look really nice. For what it is, the components are really nice. Now here's the truth of the matter. I actually like Lost Cities better with the five expeditions than with the six. The six is fine, actually, and you might want a slightly longer game. It depends on how you want to play this game. See, Lost Cities is a game of pushing your luck, and it's a game of just trying to read your opponent, and I won't back down. Kind of like just you sit there, you stand in their eyes, and who's going to blink first? And if it doesn't feel that way, I would almost venture to say, you're playing it wrong. Here's how the game works. You have a hand of eight cards. You are going to curse the fact that you have that hand of eight cards because it's going to feel entirely too small. Obviously, as the game progresses, you will get start the game, for example, with a 10 and a 9 of green. Fantastic. One more card, I get points. But I'm not happy if I get the two. The two, the nine, and the ten, that's a single point. I want to get some of those handshakes, some of those wager cards. I want to get as many of the green cards I possibly can. So I hold these cards in my hand, but when I have the two, the nine, and a ten, that's three of the eight cards in my hand. So what do I do with the rest of the cards? Do I start playing another one? Do I play them down? Because as soon as I play that five white, my opponent goes, oh, he doesn't have the two, three, or four, I can discard those and not worry about them. Because see, as much as it pains me to hold on to my own cards and wait till I get to play them, it pains me even more because I drew the 10 blue and you started blue on your side. Well, now I will never discard that blue. Now I just drew the blue eight. Now I have two big blue cards in my hand. You're never getting either of those. But if I play that way, I am basically essentially down to a six card hand the rest of the game. Ugh. Now I just drew a four blue. Fine, you can have it. And that's the way the game plays. You are trying to discard cards that you hope your opponent doesn't need. And sometimes you discard a card and hope that it doesn't help them out too much. And sometimes you hold cards in your hand as long as you can because you don't want your opponent to know what colors you're working at. This is why I like five colors better because there's an odd number of colors. One person might work on three, the other person on two. I very rarely do three myself. I like to work on just two colors. Three is okay, especially if you're playing with a six player side. Then you, six color side, you can play with three. Four colors, and it's hard to score off that one. You can even score a lot of points if you just do one color. But man, you are sweating the whole time. The whole time it's kind of this, ah, what are you going to do? And this is one of the most intensive, interesting games I've ever played. Yes, you can play this like, don't get me wrong, I'm not sitting there sitting there like I'm ready to, to fight my opponent, but it feels like a battle. And anyone who tells you Lost Cities is random, ho, 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 play me and I'll whoop you. Because I really think there's a lot of skill in Lost Cities. Now, don't get me wrong, I've lost my fair share of games with Lost Cities, but each time I, I lost, it was like they played better than me. There's luck in what cards you get, but knowing when to hold them and when to discard them really matters in this game. It is a fantastic game. It lasts just long enough. In fact, even though you play three rounds and then you add the scores together, if you don't have a lot of time, you could just play one round. Although three rounds kind of evens things out, it's always possible that you might just not do very well in one round or both of you don't do very well. Sometimes that happens, but three rounds balances out very nicely. Lost Cities is a fantastic game. They added the Six Expedition in here. You can use it or not. It's a very simple add or pull out. And you can play with either one. Like I said, there's a little bit more breathing room with six colors because you know your opponent's not going to go for that many. And there will be a color you can discard and not worry about. But the five game is tight. And, oh, I love it. Six game is not as tight, but I still think it's a very good game. And either way, both are in this box. If you don't have this one and you're looking for a great two-player game to play with people, highly recommend it. Get it. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent.